Well, good morning, Mark. Uh, welcome to, to Kit Fox Aircraft. We're out here in the weld shop, and Kit Planes is out doing some flight in the new 916 powered Super Sport. Uh, we're pr proud of that, and it's, uh, it's doing really well. Uh, everything's going really well as far as that. So we thought we'd take a few minutes and kind of give a tour of the factory here uh, while they're out uh, having fun flying the airplane. We're going to show you how the internals of this whole airplane go together. So in the meantime, what we're looking at here is basically a welded up fuselage that's come out of the fixture. If you look in the background, we have some uh, metal fixtures, and those metal fixtures were done for repeatability and uh, serviceability so that every time we can manufacture the same parts over and over and over again to the same type of tolerances. Now, of course, you have welding that's happening, so you always have uh, weld, weld pole and things like that, but that's, that's why we use steel fixtures across the board on the fuselage. We'll take a walk over to the next one over here, and you'll see some of the side fixtures and the main fixture that we work within. And... Uh, Good morning. So we have the side fixtures here, left and right sides. The metal fixtures you saw in the background are the sub-assemblies. Those sub-assemblies will turn and come into the main fixture, which is off uh, to our right here. And uh, that's a work of art in of itself. While it looks like a real heavy-duty fuselage, it completely breaks apart and opens up. So, you, so each component, when you get it in here and you have to take it apart, this whole thing opens up to be able to pull the fuselage out. Of course, the 4130 is all sourced out of U.S. mills. Uh, some of the mills aren't supplying some of the smaller diameter tubing, so we do get some tubing from uh, Europe, uh, out of Italy or um, uh, Germany. We don't get any out of the Asia side of the market. We've found that the metallurgies on that metal isn't quite up to snuff with what we like. So we stay with the U.S. manufactured products as much as we can. Some of the mills are just not making the small diameter tubing anymore. And, uh, but we do everything out of, out of 3D fixtures. We do all this as wire feed MIG. And then we also get into two TIG tables where we do a lot of the sub-assemblies in TIG. The kit box itself, um, uh, the flight controls are all push-pull tubes. So if you get into the rudder pedal assembly, uh, is, a, is all metal TIG tube, um, elevator, ailerons, or flapperons in our case, flaps, all the control mechanisms are all done with push-pull tubes and rod ends, with the exception of the rudder. The rudder is a... Uh, eighth inch stainless steel cable and uh, um, so all the subcomponents are actually TIGged on the TIG cables over here for and also done in fixtures as well our engine mounts are all done in 3D fixtures so we spent a lot of effort and time to make fixtures to repeat it rather than just building them off of a drawing we also have invested in a CNC Haas um, mill machine for doing a lot of our aluminum work and some of our steel work and we're starting to utilize it more and more and more. We also have a CNC lathe uh, that we're doing all our bushings and bearings out of. So, you know, this is one of the parts that we'll make out of the mill, for example, for the, um, the dual pin door handles. And of course, on the lathe side of the house, and this is doing a lot of the weld bungs that we put in our header tanks, as an example, currently. Of course, there are times where we'll use the manual, CN the manual lathe or the manual mill. And most of that's for quick prototyping if we need to make something very quick to test before we go to full-blown production on something. Of course, the CNC press brake. Um, and we still do a lot of the things old school with the manual, manual punches and, and uh, sheet metal brakes. So let's take a walk over to parts. That was good. Nice and tight. That's about the, the pace and cadence. So shipping and receiving, uh, we inventory all the parts for the current Model Series 7. Uh, we still support all the older models, the Model 1s through 6s, uh, as best we can. 1s, 2s, and 3s are very difficult at this point because a lot of the tooling is either gone, some of the companies that made the parts is no longer available. Um, so it's made it very difficult. We do the best we can, so be patient with us and we'll work with you. Model 4s through the current model, we can produce all of that um, at, uh, for whatever parts we need. And of course, we powder coat all the steel components. Uh, we don't powder coat here at the factory. We take it across the river over to a town uh, uh, near neighboring powder coater that, that does all our powder coating for us. It comes back into here, gets packaged and shipped. And uh, as you can see, you'll get a box with your name on it, and, or should I say several boxes with your name on it, yeah, inventory list. And it's kind of overwhelming when you look at the number of parts that actually goes into the airplane. Uh, you won't believe it when you start pulling it apart. Of course. They can't believe them when they have to pack them either. 
Um, you know, as everybody knows, since 2020 with the pandemic, we've had some very difficult times with supply chain issues and uh, pricing has, has uh, gotten very expensive on a lot of components. Because of our position in the industry and what we've been able to do on the supply chain is we got ahead of it. So we were able to order a lot of stuff in a much higher volumes than we normally would so that we can maintain our inventory to continue to produce the parts. So we're usually maintaining anywhere from six months to a year of inventory in order to uh, be able to meet the delivery times that we have on our kits. With a two year lead time on kits and a three years on factory builds, we're trying to forecast pretty far out there at this point, which is a little difficult to do to maintain the pricing, but we do our best. So, you know, one of the issues that we do run into is our vendor suppliers. Uh, we can't control how they manage their business. So sometimes that, that lead time from them gets a little bit difficult as well. We pride ourselves on shipping all the kits without back orders. Um, fortunately, because of the supply chain issue, we can't control our vendors. So some of that stuff does get back ordered on us now, but we go ahead and ship the kit ahead of time and get it out the door and then we'll drop ship those items to you at a later date. What many of you won't recognize in the video is the fact that we're walking from building to building to building. And as KitFox, we've chosen to make that more modular so our parts department is in its own building. It's not part of a one big building. So we actually have six buildings out here to combine the factory. The, the main building you were in just a minute ago was our, our uh, weld shop. We're currently in the parts department. From here, we'll go over to the wing shop and then into the fiberglass department and then into our final assembly of where we do the, some of the factory builds and the demonstration airplanes and things like that. Uh, we also have another building off-site, or not, not off-site, we have another building nearby that we build all, our, all of our crates in uh, when we ship overseas. A lot of people don't realize we don't build crates if it's shipped within the lower 48. We don't need to. We have a custom transport company that we work very closely with and they, we help them load it here. It stays on that truck, shows up at your door and you help them unload it at their door. So it's a real customized, personalized type delivery which works out really well. God, that's an old sign. <laughs> it's the old logo too. So we're coming into the wing shop here. We manufacture all the wood ribs here. We have a four by eight CNC table router, so we cut all our own foam for the flaperons, um, the ribs, the rib caps, all that stuff, the aluminum for the, uh, for the flaperons. And of course, you can see the fixture over here, which is a, a manufactured fixture, so it builds the twist in. Uh, it's actually built to have the degree of washout in it. And all the wings are now quick build that are supplied with the kits. We no longer offer them as a non-quick build. Uh, it can be done, but we usually generate not to do that because it's they're done in the fixture and we also have a, a uh, pre-rig option that allows us to take your wings, mount them to your fuselage, set the dihedral, set the twist, set the sweep, um, and preset all that information for you so that when you get it, all you have to do is do the final drilling and you're, and you're all set to go. It's a huge, huge benefit to the builder. As you're, as you're looking at the wing, one of the things that you'll find is we use a, a, a 6061 T6 drawn seamless uh, wing spar, two and a half inch diameter tube. And that is a special push for us. A drawn seamless is about 20% stronger than an extruded spar. And we also use a 6061 T6 I-beam inside the spar at the lift strut attach points for strength. Uh, the wing ribs are actually a aircraft grade Finland birch. The main rib is a uh, five millimeter 10 ply. If you're familiar with plies, they're obviously done on a, on a bias. So it makes it extraordinarily strong. The cap strips are a 2.5 millimeter five ply. We get asked a lot about why we don't use aluminum or composite in the ribs, you know, using modern technology, wood is a live product. Part of that is, is I've been doing this for about 10 years with this particular rib, is the wood is extremely strong and it recovers very well, whereas aluminum will bend and continue to yield. Composite would crack and continue to yield. This maintains its strength until it reaches the failure point. The, um, so it stays very strong. In the modern technology we use today is epoxy varnishes. So once you have it all in place and it's all sanded and ready to go, you throw an epoxy varnish over it, you've basically turned it into an encapsulated unit so you don't have to worry about moisture getting on the wood or any of those components. The lift strut that I was telling you about is actually a welded piece that gets bonded and riveted to the spar, but it's also where the I-beam is located. And that has been tested to almost 17 Gs. So it's an extraordinarily strong attach point. 
These fixtures you see here are actually our flapper on fixtures. So we take the aluminum, put them in here. Wherever, there's a, wherever there is a rib here is where a foam rib would be placed. And it gets sandwiched and bonded. So the trailing edges is bonded. It's also bonded to the foam ribs. So one of the items that we took on in-house many, many years ago at this point is all our composite work. Our wing tanks are composite. They're fuel resistant. They're uh, solvent resistant, not fuel resistant, but solvent resistant. Um, and we've done a lot of testing for that. And we started initially just making the tanks in-house. What we couldn't find is a good fiberglass composite shop that was capable of maintaining the quality that we preferred. We ended up bringing all of it in-house. So today we make all of our, all our cowlings, our wing tips. Uh, all the components are made right here uh, so we can maintain control and quality. We do a wet layup process and everything inside is all, so everything is built here. So he's spraying out a gel coat in the, in the spray booth right now. And that's the covering, the white covering that you'll see over the composite. We do all, we make all our own tooling and we also own all our own tooling. So it's all stored here and saved here. Uh, and again, we're doing everything from the vinyl esters over to the carbons. We have carbon options available as well on about everything, which is a huge weight savings. So we've just come full circle on the tour to our build area and build shop where, um, you know, obviously the, the fun begins and the final product goes out the door. And we're fortunate enough to where we've got one of our uh, factory wire harnesses that are being, uh, being installed. We, this can be installed completely after cover uh, as well. It's a full Garmin suite panel and it's completely wired for the lights, for the tail lights, for the nav strobe lights, uh, headsets. It's it, basically you add power and ground to the final assembly and it gets completely done. So we've spent a lot of time and effort doing this and getting it developed to where it actually fits specifically into the kit box design. We don't do custom panels. Those panels are specific for Garmin with a GTR 200 radio, the transponder, ADS-B in and out. It can have a three or two axis autopilot. We're getting ready to introduce the third axis uh, for yaw, but you can have a single screen or a dual screen. And, uh, and it works on any of the 912 IS or, nine, or any of the Rotax 9 series IS engines. It's specifically for the IS. We currently don't offer it for the ULS or the 914s. It's a completely different engine package. The beauty of the, the Rotax IS engines is the fact that the FADEC is the whole engine control. So you basically plug that in to the harness and voila. So as a note, what you're seeing here is the, the tail feathers, the elevator and the uh, stabilizer being, fab or being fabric covered in what we call poly brush, which is the fabric sealer. And as a note, with your kit, the polyfiber system is completely included. So all your, your, your glues, your poly brush, which is the sealer. Where we stop that is at the spray coats. We had to find a dividing point. So we decided that the minute you have to grab a spray gun, then you have to buy the components that go in the spray gun. So you'll end up buying a little bit more poly brush because the first coat is a spray coat of poly brush. And then of course your silver, which is, what we call, is the UV protectant, it's called poly spray. Um, and then of course on top of that is your top coats. So along with the polyfiber, we have all our hardware that's included. It's all aircraft grade hardware, washers, nuts, screws. You don't really have to go out and source any of that stuff unless there's something custom you're doing or, or maybe you want to use a shorter bolt or a thin washer. It's always a good idea to go out and buy some extra 365 1032s or 364 1032s or the 960 10 washers or 10L washers, of course. Those are always handy to have anyway. Um, the but everything is included in the kit to get you to that point with the exception of the firewall forward. The things that aren't, well, your doors are included, so your, your skins are included. The windshield is included. It's an acrylic windshield, not a polycarbonate windshield. Uh, just everything is there for you to do that. Your options are just that, they're options. You don't necessarily have to have them, although everybody does upgrade to them because they are good options, but they are just that, they're an option. You don't have to have it. And when we're talking about polyfiber, one of the questions I get a lot is, the strength, the fabric, it can't be that tough, right? Well, if you look at fabric in general, it's a Dacron polyester fabric. So it is literally, it shrinks to fit. So when you go to install it, you glue it to the components that you're gonna to glue to, you grab an iron and it shrinks up to 10% by heat, okay? And then of course it's a fabric. So at that point it's kind of sensitive because it's fabric, but once you shrink it, the weave separates a little bit, then you put the poly brush on it, which helps seal the weave. Once you've done that, you've almost created a drum skin, and it will actually sound like it sometimes when you, when you dump on it. 
This is an old, old elevator that was off a, a dear friend's uh, airplane. And we use it frequently to show the strength of the fabric. So what I'm about to do is gonna get a little noisy and, and probably spook you. But this was on an airplane in Arizona for almost 2,000 hours. It hasn't been touched or doctored. You can see the spider webbing in here and stuff. That's because what happens is I'll walk up to show you the strength and go just like that. So because we were interrupted by the airplane that just landed, bummer problems of living at an airport, the problems, uh, the difficulty of living at an airport, the, the strength of it, the reason this is all spider webbed is because I'll usually walk up to it to demonstrate the strength and, and actually hit it. You're not gonna tear into this very hard. And if you were in the back country, let's say, and a bear got to it because they went after the peaches you left in the baggage area, it's happened. Um, bring Tyvek tape or duct tape with you and you can actually fly the airplane back out. You tape it up, bring it home and fix it. So thanks for coming out on the tour. It looks like Kip Plains is coming back with the 916. So we're gonna go uh, entertain them. We love what we do. We put out a high quality product. We're proud of it. And uh, we hope you join the family.